The men's 3,000 meters is next up as we come to you live from the sports arena in Los Angeles, the world park belonging to Emil Pudelman. The American record to Doug Padilla, and he is in the field tonight. And Larry Ross, and this could very well be a kicker's race. Padilla, Deemer, and Karayuki, all good kickers. Well, Padilla, I think, and Karayuki might take the measure of Brian. Brian is good, but if Brian may force the pace. There you see other competitors, Mark Jukeman, Bob Verbeek from Belgium and Iowa State, Wes Ashford, Adam McAvoy from the University of California, David Frank on the outside of Steeplechaser, Karayuki, a top Kenyan runner. It's going to be interesting to see how well he does. There is Doug Padilla, personal best outdoors, 7, 35.84. The number one American in 1983, 84, and 85. And there you see our top steeplechaser applauding right there. The introduction of Padilla, that's Brian Deemer. Deemer made our Olympic team and got a bronze medal just edging out teammate Henry Marsh. But he had a very fine year last year over in Rome at the World Championships. It is a good start. Padilla, Bob Verbeek, and Mark Yuckerman wanting one, two, three. And now it is Bob Verbeek of Belgium is the guy from the early going. This race, if you're wondering about 3,000 meters and you get confused metrically at home, that is seven and a half laps around your local high school quarter mile track. It is just 220 yards or so shy of a full two mile run. This substitutes the old two mile run indoors. Padilla running comfortably in second, and that is Karyuki in third right now. Norquist and Stanton have no misses. It is still Belgium's Bob Verbeek. And Karyuki. Frank now into third. Karyuki. Bob. Pardon me. Doug Padilla is in second. And now David Frank, number 12, moving in on Padilla's right shoulder. It's amazing. You know, I watch these guys move around on the track out there. And the, the athletic motto uh, of the Olympics, Sidious Alpheus Fortius, is so true. We all wonder if basketball teams going back 10 or 15 years ago, the Celtics could play with the Lakers today. I don't think personally that they could. The, at the turn of the century, the world record for two miles, Bill, was 10 minutes and two seconds, five minute mile pace. Now the marathon runners run six seconds per mile faster than that. They run 26 miles faster than the world record at the turn of the century for two miles. These guys would beat these guys by about 25% of the race. Dwight, I don't know, uh, high jumpers, the first six footer was back at the turn in 1876. Look what you guys are doing now. Well, you're getting so much improvement in all the events because of better surfaces for us to compete on, better training techniques, the things that used to be taboo, like weightlifting used to be such a taboo the way that we do it now, and now we're even moving into other styles of weightlifting. Even runners are weightlifting now, as certainly you know, Larry. But, uh, you know, one of the things that, that uh, you, have to, you have to get a feeling of during this indoor season, certainly this meet so far, is that everybody is feeling each other out. They're feeling where they are. It's almost like it would be such a psychologically debilitating experience for them to lose a race on a slow time this early in the season or to lose an event at a low height in the pole vault of the high today. Everyone seems very, very tentative and, and, and they keep giving themselves excuses that they have the rest of the season to prepare for the big meet. But I have to tell you, some of the athletes who are doing well in the indoor season are going to have a tremendous psychological event over the rest of the athletes that they're competing against. Here's Mike Tully for his first attempt at 19 feet a quarter inches, which is well over his personal record. I think this is a lot higher than Michael had decided he was going to have to compete this early unless he was pushed by a competitor and he has already far out distanced the field by making 86 and a half when the second place competitor only jumped 17, 8 and a half. Michael has got a real good jump, no pun intended, on the rest of the pole ballers during this indoor season. That was a pun, you realize that. Well, the men's 3,000 meters is well underway. Belgium's Bob Verbeek still leading, but Julius Barayuki of Kenya has now moved up into second place. Doug Padilla is in third, and David Frank in fourth. Thank you. 
Back at the track, they passed the quarter mile in 64 seconds, the 880 in two minutes, 10 and five tenths of a second. Three quarters of a mile went at 317.5. It's still for beats. Karayuki right out there, and Jugerman from UCLA is at third, and that is Doug Kavia just resting back there in fourth. The pace very comfortable. This will be a superb ticker's race, Bill. Well, Mark Junkerman has now moved up into second place, and he has just passed the Belgian, Bob Verbeek. It is Junkerman moving out forward in the first place. Not much of a surprise, Larry, when you consider a year ago, Junkerman shaved eight seconds off his best steeplechase time. The mile, four minutes, 24 and eight-tenths of a second, and things are going to get cookie here, Phil. Believe me, these guys are out for a stroll so far. Junkerman leading by a good five strides over Bob Verbeek. Karayuki is now passing Verbeek's right shoulder, and Karayuki of Kenya moves into second place as they come down the front straight away once more. The pace is picking up. And Jukerman is forcing the issue right now. He probably is not as good a kicker as some of the athletes back there. He does fear Karayuki's better speed, and also Padilla. Padilla's just getting cranked up. He's up on the balls of his feet. Watch, he's gliding out there in second place. Look at him glide up into position. Doug Padilla in second place is truly in control of this Padilla. race. It is Junkerman, Padilla, and Brigham Young's Wes Ashford. Back at the race, Jukerman took them through a 62-point quarter mile. They hit one and a quarter mile in five minutes, 26 seconds flat. This last equivalent mile is going to be very fast in this race. Now it's Padilla looking to force the issue. Jukerman's right up there. Karayuki looks very comfortable to be deep in getting in position. Well, just as we suspected, it is Karayuki, Deemer, and Padilla poised to strike at Mark Junkerman. Junkerman leading now by just two strides. Padilla right on his sneakers. One and a half miles in six minutes, 30 seconds. So they threw it at 2.05, half mile in the middle of the race. 4.10 mile pace. I might add while we have a quick second, this is a mobile indoor Grand Prix event, one of 13 in the circuit. There's $150,000 at stake for the winners of different events who amass the most points competing in those 13 events. And an additional bill, $60,000 to go to the top five and men and top five women who amass the most points when you combine their events for the year. We can thank the Mobile Corporation. This is their eighth year of involvement for the Athletes of America. There goes Deemer. Again, Deemer lacks the finishing speed of Padilla. Let's see if Karayuki gets up on him, but it's Deemer trying to steal the show here. One run to go, and it is Padilla now, flashing by Brian Deemer. Padilla, the great legendary kick. Deemer, representing Athletics West, now closing in on... Unofficially, that is about an 8.39 two-mile. Watch the backstretch over there. Deemer, realizing that he lacks the finishing kick of Padilla, tries to sneak up on him. Look at him up on the toes. Doug really coasting right now, thinking he's got full control of the race until he realizes and feels the pressure on his shoulder. Watch him just start to accelerate. He has tremendous speed that's helped carry him as high as being ranked number two in the world at 5,000 meters in 1985. America's probable best hope for a 5,000-meter medal at the Olympics in Seoul. Doug Padilla wins here in Los Angeles. Padilla, with an afterburner of an F-14, bruises to victory here and the 3,000-meter run. Oh, what a finish. Well, a moment ago, Doug Padilla ran to victory in the men's 3,000-meter run, and oh, did he get a test. Whitestone standing by with Doug. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. You run these races indoors, you're built for the turns, you do well here. What is the difference outdoors? You've had six, seven months to prepare, you've got your mileage, you've done your intervals. What happens in the big meets in Europe in the heart of the of the season overseas? It's hard to say. If I knew that, we could fix it. Uh, last year I got strapped at the wrong time, and boy, that's hard to shake. I should have never gone to Pan Am's, I can see now, but they couldn't replace me. I had nothing to lose. I may as well go ahead and try. Maybe I could have a good race. I don't know. Uh, I had a good year in 85, 
I didn't lose one 5,000 meter all the way through. Fortunately, I never ran against a weed. I don't know if I was ready for that, but, but I ran well. Um, maybe it just isn't meant to be yet. Indoors, it just doesn't seem like there are any tactics that can be pulled on you that will uh, allow you to lose. And Deemer made a very rookie mistake in the last turn of this race, and he looked like he had the energy to maybe go by you. Uh, I don't know what you could have pulled up in the last 40 meters, but he made a mistake. You were able to run a, a pace that was pretty easy for you. How does this race fit into your overall plan for the season? Well, really, when you get the indoor season, you just got to take it a week at a time, a race at a time, try and get yourself into good shape. The biggest thing, besides enjoying indoors, the biggest thing is I couldn't train from November to May and be competitive. Okay, we'll see you later outdoors.